We're ready to begin installation of the bellows transition fitting. We've laid out all of our parts and confirmed that everything is inside the box. We've got our actual bellows itself, which you'll notice is quite rigid. Our internal assembly, which provides the flexibility with the expansion joint built in. Our plate, two sets of rings, gaskets, and our hardware were all pulled out of the box. What we'll need from a tool standpoint is ratchet wrenches, three quarter inch, a torque wrench with a deep socket, three quarter inch, standard channel locks, 16 inch, and anti-seize for the bolts. Now that we've laid out our parts and tools, we can begin the assembly of the transition fitting. The first thing we'll need to do is remove the alignment sleeve that is installed for shipping purposes to keep the two tanks aligned. There are two nuts inside the interior of the alignment sleeve that are holding the sleeve against the primary tank fitting. They need to be removed. With the primary tank fitting exposed, this is a good time to check bolt torque on the primary tank fitting. We've set our torque wrench to 20 foot-pounds. At this point, we're ready to install our assembly. We'll primer and glue both the end of the nipple as well as the coupler and install with a quarter turn. Now that our assembly is installed, we'll want to wait 24 hours for the glue to set. Once 24 hours is up, this is a great point in your assembly to plug the end of the fitting and go ahead and perform your 24-hour hydro test on the tank. Okay, we've passed our 24-hour hydro test free of leaks and we're ready to install the actual bellows assembly. We'll start with the tank side, which is going to be the larger of the pieces that we've laid out earlier. We'll begin with the gasket. We can move on to putting our actual bellows assembly onto the tank. At this point where we're resting on here, we're ready to install our rings. It will be important to get one nut on here to hold the assembly together so that you can continue with installation of the rest. Always remember to use anti-seize on every bolt. A flat washer, followed by a lock washer, and finally our nut will hold this assembly together. Now that our tank site is complete, we're ready to install the plate end of the transition fitting. 
We've removed the nut from the bulkhead fitting and we're careful to leave the gasket on the bulkhead to achieve a seal inside the transition fitting itself. We'll add our gasket and plate that are the smaller of the fittings that we had out to this end with a smaller set of split rings. We'll add the rest of the bolts all the way around and torque down to approximately 10 foot-pounds. We'll check our torque with a torque wrench to ensure we're at 10 foot-pounds. And once we've clicked, we're ready to install the nut on the bulkhead. Keep in mind, these are reverse threads. Tightening a bulkhead is hand tight, plus approximately one quarter turn with channel locks. Now that we're snug here, we can add our nubs to the end of the bolts for safety, and we've installed our transition fit.